Are we on? There we go. Timer's started. Okay. I have not timed my presentation. I do not know how exactly how long it takes, but we'll give this a swap, a uh, try. So um, more better is a thing I heard at a company I used to work for. It's stupid wordplay. I feel like I haven't heard as much stupid wordplay in the software community since the 80s or 90s, so I thought it would be fun to include. Um, so in our uh, code at work, we started pre-C++11. We did not have std atomic, so we had our own sort of atomic library. And one of the functions we had was we had atomic update and atomic try update, which I'll explain in a moment. But um, they're not magic. They're kind of simple and stupid, but I feel like they make code easier to read. So that's the point of this. So what is the problem that we're dealing with? Um, if I'm using std atomic and I have a std atomic uh, that is a foo and I want to update it, um, I might load the old value and then in a while, do while loop, I will try to figure out what my next value should be. I will call compare exchange weak or maybe strong, and I will loop while that fails. And that's great, I can write that code. Uh, maybe I wanted the old, the old value from the atomic uh, before the swap, maybe I didn't. But what's the problem? Um, this general case relies on a lot of pieces of knowledge about std atomic, which you can absolutely find in the reference uh, uh, manual, but you may not remember offhand, which means when you're reading a piece of code trying to find out if it has bugs because you're in code review, or because you think there might be a, bit, a bug in the code because you're trying to debug some hard problem, you've got a lot of things you have to look at to figure out are they exactly right. So it does compare exchange strong or weak update the old value on a compare and swap miss? Or do I have to reload the old value? I know the answer, the manual knows the answer. Do you know the answer? Do I want weak or strong semantics on this compare exchange? What's the difference? What kind of memory barriers do I need? Was the default sequentially consistent? Is that overweight for my use case? Probably, but that's the default. Does compare exchange return true or false when it succeeds? I think I know, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, and did that function I called, that make next t, did it mutate the old value even though it shouldn't? So all of these are things you should know, but maybe don't want to have to think about. So here's one wrapper you can use uh, that essentially replaces that do while loop with a single function call and you pass it a lambda. So you pass it this functor to update and it does all the work for you. And the gist of it, there's, a, there's this funny two store order and two load order. Um, I had fun times trying to actually get this to work when I just passed the order into compare exchange week. Like my version of Clang said, no, this is not a very valid argument. So I had to use the, um, the four argument version instead of the three argument version. So here's how I would use it. I would say, for example, I've got um, an internal string type and I want to remember how many strings I have and how much memory they're taking up so I can report on this regularly. So every time I make a new string, I will note down that there is exactly one more string and it takes up this much size. So instead of having to do the mechanics of that do while loop myself, I just put it in the lambda. I, you gave me the old value, I updated it and I said, here's the new one. You go and figure out how to exactly make this happen atomically. Um, similarly, um, this example comes from a place where I have a 64-bit uh, time and I want to convert it to a 32-bit time a second, so there's some foo in there. This is an actual example from our code, which is why it's maybe not the best slide wear. Um, so I can read the old value, and then if the old value is less than the current value, I update it, otherwise I don't. So atomic try update is a very similar idea, except that I may not decide I actually want to do the exchange. Based on the information I see from the atomic, I may say, look, there's, there's nothing in here I want to update. Let's just not bother with the atomic uh, update at all. So you have the ability to return true or false from your lambda, and then we decide to do the compare exchange or not. So code that uses that would look, this is an example where it looks like the code looks like worse because um, I take, um, I decide like I'm um, updating or not, and the old one just said let's always do the update. But I would save on an atomic update if I didn't actually need to do it, which might be a performance win for you. I have a better example here. Suppose I have this complicated state where um, I'm doing all lock-free programming, so either, either I can do things because I can acquire a lock atomically, or I'm just gonna push my work into a stack to be worked on later. And so I have this uh, complicated state, and I have an out, outer set of uh, head and tail for this uh, in-order queue that is managed by this claim bit inside the state. And so this claim bit acts as a lock, and if I can get it, I do my work, otherwise I don't, and I'm almost out of time. So here would be what I might do. I'd say if the state is not claimed, and I don't have waiters, and I have waiters, I'd fetch out the item in the stack, and I'd try to set the claim bit, and I'd update a nonce, because we have ABA problems. And if I didn't do anything, I'd just say, look, I got no work to do. And then outside of this lambda, I'd check, did I, get the, did I get the lock? If I got the lock, I work on the list. If I didn't get the lock, I don't work on the list. 
And this is the end of my talk. I find this stuff easier to read. There's nothing magic here, but you just have to remember to update your variables every time through the Lambda for bad things happen.